A quote from the gallery reads, you explore work from Australian art and social history archives to explore what's missing from them. It's interesting. Is your work, this is my kind of, uh, my thoughts on it, is your work about making people question their understanding of history and how our society has conditioned our thoughts? Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, hi. Um, yeah, I am really interested in sort of that connection between art and social histories and I guess um, probably the sense that, that how you might experience or, or feel history, that it's not necessarily something that, um, it's not always the things you learn or the things that are kind of, um, you know, positioned so directly, that it might be the things that you kind of feel or experience in a place or a location um, that I think do condition our thoughts. And I, I guess I've, I've been kind of thinking about how um, there's um, just so many different ways that you can kind of access those, um, maybe those, those feelings and, and just what it means to be in Australia as well, where I guess a lot of, um, a lot of aspects of, of Australian history are kind of unexplored or have sort of stemmed from these founding myths, but um, yeah, then becomes... What do you mean founding myths? Do you mean the way, or what we're taught as we grow up in a place like Australia and you thought, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine, maybe yeah. there was a point where you thought, maybe this isn't exactly the truth uh, or this kind of education I'm getting and or, or maybe it is but maybe it's something you need to use art to kind of explore you know what may or may not be the actual case of history yeah I think that's it I guess a sense that um, you don't have to scratch the surface very hard here in any any kind of place or or location to find um, things that have been kind of hidden or, or not revealed, you know, starting from sort of early colonial history, but also to more recent migration history. And I guess I've been just pretty, um, yeah, pretty intrigued by how that works, but also by, um, you know, your own position in this place and what it means to be here. You work in multiple mediums, and in this piece of yours, paint on canvas and the wall and digital video, was the Bauhaus movement and its emphasis on multiple mediums and influence on your work? Sorry, long question. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, yeah, absolutely. I've been really interested in, I guess, the Bauhaus and particularly how the Bauhaus and some of those ideas of the, of the total artwork, but also just this confluence between kind of art and everyday life um, have played themselves out, and particularly in Australia. And Hirschfeld Mack was really interesting to me because he's made some beautiful, um, uh, like both, you know, colour light ballets where he has these kind of amazing kaleidoscopic projected um, sort of dancing images and he's also you know done paintings and ceramics um, but also I guess for his his work um, really within the social sphere both as a teacher um, but also um, with education projects um, and sort of training other teachers to implement Bauhaus curriculum in Australia post-war so I guess I was pretty interested both in that idea of of kind of the total artwork, but also of an artwork. You mentioned as Bauhaus curriculum. Was it, it, it describe that as Bauhaus is not just a style of art, is it a kind of philosophy on art? Yeah, so. yeah. So I guess the things that he really implemented here were, were kind of um, teacher training. So, you know, learning basic design principles, um, starting from um, experimenting with materials rather than having a specific uh, form in mind when you set out making your work colour theory, that kind of stuff. I was yeah. about to mention that. Hirschfeld Mack, he developed Farblicht music in, uh, coloured light music, a light and colour modulator which provided a visual translation of music. I love the idea of interpreting one piece of art through another medium. Uh, did the work of Ludwig influence your work or was it his life in general you drew from to create your work? Yeah, I think both. Um, I guess both interested in some of the, you know, the formal and aesthetic aspects of his work. But yeah, I was definitely interested in um, his life and also the way that he came to Australia. He was deported from the UK in 1940 and um, brought here on the Denera and interned in Australia. So I was, I was also interested in um, how he came to be here and, um, and what that meant as Why well. Why was he deported from London? Uh, basically, there was a, a program to deport um, Germans. He was a he was Jewish, um, but also Germans enemies from Britain. Um, so yeah, there was a couple of thousand people brought to Australia in the midst of the war, and he was one of them. Your work's obviously pretty involved or planned, I think. Do you ever do things just because 
you know, you feel like it. Do you put a, to put a work of art together because you, you just feel like it? There totally. Is no purpose. Yeah, totally. Well, I think you, you can kind of see in the work that um, I guess part of um, my practice and Raphaela McDonald's practice, who I made the um, work with, is quite research based, but then a lot of a lot of it is just really fun and throwing colours around and seeing what happens. Is it just as relevant to you, those works? Yeah, I think so. I think it's like a sort of trying to find an intuitive way to understand things, not just um, necessarily a kind of, um, yeah, other more um, familiar forms. Perhaps like music, it's more people look back when they make something and just go, look, I was very inspired for whatever reason. <laughs> it happened and there it is and it makes me feel good or it makes me feel sad or whatever it is. And why should I not do that? Yeah, I think also it's kind of interesting just that sense. I was, I was reading, um, yeah, I think Justin Clements had written about Juan de Villa's work and also just that sometimes it might seem a bit weird or, you know, kind of outrageous or shocking, but it's also just, it's, it not, it's not necessarily just about um, sort of conveying something symbolically, but it's just about using that freedom because you have it and it's so important to use. We're in the NGV's Australian collection. I want to ask you, who was the first Australian to have a big impact on your work? Was there anyone who was like seminal in making you want to proceed forth and become an artist? Yeah, I think there was um, a couple of people. I remember seeing as a teenager an Emily Nunwari painting and just kind of, you know, seeing this sort of immersive um, field of lines. It was big yam dreaming um, and just kind of had this phenomenal movement to it and just felt like a really exciting way to experience what, you know, I, I didn't really know anything about what the work was about, but I guess it kind of had this sense of these, these tendrils of the yams and maybe a connection to kind of a country that I couldn't understand. Um, but I found it really exciting. Um, and also definitely, yeah, as a teenager, I remember seeing Juan de Villa's work and just it kind of was, yeah, shocking and naughty. And um, I think I saw an image where um, there was a figure wearing a Ned Kelly mask, um, but also was kind of, yeah, a sort of gay porn icon, Tom of Finland um, imagery in there as well. And just that combination of these strange, odd things, yeah, I thought was really cool. Uh, you're from Hobart, and you live and work out of Melbourne. I just want to finish up by asking you, we've talked about some great arts. How important is the local landscape and society you see around you to your work? Or do you just, because we, we talked before, you draw from history with your work. You know, do you get inspired by what you see around you with some of your works that you're doing now? And how does that affect you? Yeah, totally. I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's really important to me where um, be, being in Melbourne, not only, you know, family and friends and other people to work with, but um, definitely the landscape. And, yeah, I remember just recently reading about a work that was um, about how Swanson Street used to be a river. And just those things that I think once you're in a place for a long time, you start to... Swanson Street used to be a river? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a beautiful work by um, a young artist, Bridget Fitzgerald, kind of looking at, um, yeah, how we don't remember certain things underneath the architecture of the city. Yeah, but I just think that that's a really cool way to be in a place. Well, thank you, Brian. We wish you all the best in the future. Um, it's great talking to you for a minute about your work and draw attention to you and uh, a lot of great uh, local artists. Um, so we wish you all the best in the future. Um, and thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Brianna.